And we are out in Bushwick. We're going to try to maybe pop in and catch a couple of exhibitions. Hang on. We're going to look at some art. We're here at Clearing. And look at an exhibition by well, an artist that's got maybe one of the best names that I've heard in a long time for an artist. Sebastian Black. Well, the title of the show is Tales I Knows, and uh, Sebastian is actually uh, printed up kind of an odd little directory, and each one of these pieces has a a little short story or poem that goes with it. This one is titled Poor Little Cursor Filtrum Fickled Weekly on the Tundra Tap 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 Are you cold in there? You need a big Russian hat? Nose? Can you do the dance that I wonder? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to read all of these. Um, so it's December 5th 2015 and uh, I'm actually in an exhibition with Sebastian that was curated by Fong Bui and it's at the uh, SVA studios and I believe they're on 27th Street between 10th and 11th Avenue okay <clears throat> I don't know what the title for this, but the little poem that it's with starts out, I believe that when civilization comes to an end and Mother Earth had finally shaves off its rats, <laughs> uh, well, I think Sebastian is a young, young-ish painter. I'm not sure, but uh, He's got a lot of attention because he's he's got a very uh, nice sense of composition, and uh, well, I think his color his color is good. This is, starts out. My mom's friend died. Her best features were her big round head and her skinny little legs, nose, mouth. Anyway, this is. 2015 oil on linen, 63 by 84 inches. Well, I won't comment on the the literary or the poetic aspects of this. I was walking around and sort of thinking a little bit about um, what these paintings made me think of, and I was kind of uh, 
getting a little vibration of the, um, the precisionists or maybe um, Corbusier and Ozenfant and their little their group although uh, I always had kind of uh, references to uh, some kind of figurative elements and uh, these are pretty pretty much straight ahead abstraction Stanford Connecticut what an M eyes what a shade of brown on that car park beyond the spotty Amtrak portal. Anyway, Sebastian likes to work with a very flat uh, surface and uh, pretty dry, but he does a nice job of uh, kind of pairing near uh, opposites on the color wheel, and then he's got a lot of uh, nice analogous color things happening with the the greens sort of slipping into the blues I've got some kind of rusty browns slipping into the burnt oranges also uh, here in this I guess I would call it an installation they've got a couple of um, nicely fabricated plywood tables and they've got some of Sebastian's prints and these are aqua tint this is very subtle I don't know how much we'll be able to get on video well it's late on a Sunday evening and uh, yeah, so these prints are actually just joined sheets and, and if that represents one piece then I would say those are probably uh, maybe 10 feet long let's look in the back room so we've got more of these tables with the prints the left? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, we'll look at the uh, the prints first. Period piece, simple sequence one, 2015, aquatint on paper, plywood, unpolished, low iron glass, two parts. This is 19 and 3 quarters by 137 and a half inches. And uh, yeah, that's very subtle. You might be able to catch a little glimpse of what looks like um, kind of uh, letter stencils, maybe. And these little black rectangles really punch up the uh, composition there. I saw some pink 20 inch rims with breast cancer ribbons on them. <laughs> so this is 2015 oil on linen, 84 by 63 inches. And uh, well, on this one he's really toned down his palette, or maybe toned up his palette. I like that. That looks like the uh, the end of some letters in uh, Bondini bold. This one in particular has a surface that's almost like a fresco. I seen a flower once with all the petals blowed off by the wind except for two 
parentheses, muzzy eyes, close parentheses, there was, the, there was a big cruel horsefly on each, weighing them down. You can see on this little section where there's some scraping. It's also 2015 oil on linen, 84 by 63 inches. My friend worked as a public defender in Nashville, and he told me about the racist judges with their racist gavels, parentheses, nose, mouth, close parentheses. He told me how they whacked deep grooves, parentheses, whiskers, into the desks, which were made at, which were mad at for being called benches. Well, this is nice, and we've got uh, some very closely keyed, this would be a violet brown versus a raw umber brown. We'll wrap up looking at this one here. My wife always ran behind some twins on her high school's women's cross-country team. They were a speedy duo. They marched blonde ponytails, parentheses, ears, close parentheses, were more in sync than a pair of pendulums at a clock shop. <laughs> and this is also nice because we get uh, some areas where we've got some pedimenti. You get to see some of the underlayers. And then we have these other flat areas that are totally opaque. Yeah, I, uh, I like the contrast between a, uh, a hard, solid color block and something that's a little more variegated. This is James Com, and we are just making a quick run through of Sebastian Black's tail, Tails I Knows. Here at Clearing. And I don't give a fuck if they block our respect And nigga ain't style, he better pay you on his bed Throw your money on the floor, or I'ma break your jaw And dig in your pockets and take a lot more well, Now we're gonna pop into Interstate Here on Knickerbocker Avenue I'm gonna see a uh, two-person show here Oh, don't let me interrupt you. And uh, the upper gallery is an exhibition by Ramos Myrup titled Scavenger of Carcasses. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's kind of shallow black pools with water. And uh, Got a couple of other elements here. That... But it is just like these images on panes of glass and uh, these things, which I think are maybe ceramic. Well, uh, there were several artists. I remember back in the 80s they were using this device of the uh, the reflective pools. I think Dennis Oppenheim did some pieces using them. And uh, well, it's nice because it really does kind of change the the space of the gallery. And uh, well, it relates to people like Carl Andre sort of 
thinking about the flatness of sculpture and it uh, kind of closes off <laughs> parts of the gallery you know there's no no gallery list this is this is what Ramos has produced for the <laughs> the guide it looks like a little illuminated manuscript been watching too many Game of Thrones episodes and then uh, and there are these the glass elements well we're gonna look at the show downstairs too which is also interesting Okay, so we're down in the basement gallery, and uh, this is an exhibition by Derek Fretch titled Countermeasures. And uh, well, I just walked in here, looked around, and uh, hadn't read the press release or anything, and was just sort of thinking that uh, it's kind of a minimalist arrangement of electronical apparatuses but uh, as I read the press release I thought there were some interesting things here so I'll read a little bit French has created a space with the capacity to be an RF radio frequency quiet room a room that is free of electronic transmissions including Wi-Fi GPS cell phone signals Bluetooth and radio communications as I was looking at this, this is about the only thing I could recognize. We got a spark plug, an old car guy. To this, French has armed the entrance of the gallery with an electromagnetic pulse, EMP, that if turned on, could disable any electronics entering or exiting the space. So I guess we're lucky none of this is turned on, but I guess we could uh, break this open and flip the switch. And, uh, gee, we've got a little, what is that, a six volt battery? Providing the power. I actually like this selection because, uh, it's kind of a, uh, minimal electronic thing, but he's doing something with color. So we've got, uh, I guess the various devices that this will block. By creating a potential RF quiet room, countermeasures brings the attention to how digital and physical privacy are nearly impossibilities. The constancy with which it is controlled and the morality of that condition, our reliance on wireless communications and the ease with which these networks are monitored, makes the most essential human act, language, transmission, of information reliant and defined by external forces. Signal jammers have the potential to temporarily thwart this and present an alternative to those who want to exist outside of this structure. This includes protesters, political dissenters, or the average citizen who is concerned with privacy or who wants a way to shut off. And uh, so they also say, Signal jammers are devices that are deliberately, that deliberately disrupt authorized wireless communications. In the United States, these instruments are regulated by the FCC and are illegal for citizens to operate, import, sell, or market. Violating these regulations is a federal crime, and the FCC classifies their use as theft, as they can disrupt services for paying customers. Using jammers has legal repercussions, including steep fines and jail time, as well as complex moral implications. The FCC makes the moral case to ban these because of their ability to prevent communication during emergencies. Anyway, so that's a little background on what I think is a kind of an interesting conceptual piece. And uh, well, I'm still pondering whether or not we should break this open and flip the switch. Getting all kinds of bad trouble here. So we've been looking at two shows upstairs, Scavengers of Carcasses by Ramus Myrup, and 
downstairs, Derek Fresh countermeasures at Interstate 66 Knickerbocker Avenue in Bushwick. Thank you, Kate. My name is E. Fist, my past life I was stuck in. But now I'm just flipping a motherfucking camera, get busted. Hey, bust the fucking hammer.